Welcome to those who are joining us on the internet. Uh, it's great to know that you are joining with us. And one day, when you're passing through Perry at half past ten on a Sunday, if you drop in, we'd love to see you in person. Let's spend a few moments now in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are indeed the shepherd that will guide us, comfort us, and lead us through. And we pray, dear Lord, and Heavenly Father, that uh, whatever may be our experience just now, may we have that sense that you are the shepherd touching us, healing us, leading us. We're conscious that there may be some who are listening and who are going through troubled times where uh, very much aware of people from our own locality who are in holiday, sorry, uh, who are in hospital. And Lord and Heavenly Father, we, we pray that uh, they may see and feel that you are indeed with them. Pray for Jocelyn, who is in hospital, normally would be here on a Sunday. Pray for Sheila, who would normally uh, be along at the, the drop in that we have each, each month. And uh, in the midst of where they are just now, may they feel the strength that you can give. We look forward to the time when each of them will be discharged and brought back into the village here. And so we would pray this in your name's sake. Amen. We read from Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. And read from verse 1. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground. Casts it down to the dust. Fill trample feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor, the path of the righteous is level. You, the upright one, make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we <coughs> wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night, in the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. But when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in a land of uprightness, they go on doing evil and do not regard the majesty of the Lord. Lord, your hand is lifted high, but they do not see it. Let them see you let them see your zeal for your people and be put to shame. Let the fire reserved for your enemies consume them. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Lord our God, other lords, other lords besides you have ruled over us, but it's your name alone that we honour. And now dead, they live no more. Their spirits do not rise. You punished them and brought them to ruin. You wiped out all memory of them. You have enlarged the nation. You have gained glory for yourself. You have extended all the borders of the land. Lord, they came to you in their distress. When you disciplined them, they could barely whisper a prayer. As a pregnant woman about to give birth, breathes and cries out in our pain, so were we in your presence, Lord. We were a child, 
We reached in labour, but we gave birth to wind. We have not brought salvation to the earth, and the people of the world have not come to life. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout with joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people. Enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath is passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed on it. The earth will conceal its slain no more. May the Lord add his blessing as we come to meditate on his word today. Well, I'm going to bring, bring to you a song. And I'm sure that some of you will be worried now, <laughs> having heard my singing. But I'm going to bring you a song as it is here in Isaiah. In this day, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. And so Isaiah goes on to bring this song that he desires to be in our hearts. It's a song of praise. A song of praise. And, and uh, when we look to the God who's with us and has been with us and continues to be with us, what a, what a note of praise comes from our heart as we see the wonder of what he can and would do. A song. A song in which he's speaking of peace. Peace. And, and they've had some tremendous troubles. Uh, when we look back through the earlier chapters of Isaiah, what troubles they've had. And as we come to this song of Isaiah 26, we're coming to a chapter that speaks of peace, peace. It was what Renita once said, a born-again person ought to possess unspeakable peace in the spirit. We ought to, we should do unspeakable peace in the spirit. Peace. A perfect peace. A perfect peace. Our God wants us to know peace in our lives. He wants us to experience it. And to know that that peace is a peace that's beyond imagination. Tremendous peace. I want to look at that perfect peace, that perfect peace that our Lord has for us. First of all, there is a promise. There's a promise of perfect peace. We can find in that third verse of this chapter. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Because they trust in you. What a promise. What a promise. You will keep in perfect peace. And, uh, you know, you notice the promises that we get. And when we see promises like this, do note, it doesn't say it's possible, it could happen, maybe. This is very definite. Very definite. You will keep in perfect peace. What a promise for us to know. Tremendous promise. And to know that peace that passes all human understanding. You know, that's uh, what we read there in the New Testament. Peace that passes all human understanding. Can't understand it. Shouldn't happen. My circumstances are such, I shouldn't be experiencing peace. It's beyond my understanding. But this is the perfect peace our Lord's got for us. It's a peace that passes all human understanding. Here is the promise. Here is the promise. You will keep in perfect peace. No, I shouldn't. My circumstances don't fit. But you will. You will keep in perfect peace. Those, those whose minds are steadfast. Steadfast. Steadfast 
because they trust in you. And when the promise is given, here is, is the, the, the uh, conditions, if you like. It's promised for us all. It's available for us all. But is our mind steadfast? Is our mind steadfast upon the Lord? Is our mind steadfast upon the one who can give to us the perfect peace? That perfect peace. To know what it is in God's strength. To know what it is in God's strength. He has the ability to give it to us all. Uh, in the earlier verses. And we read, we have a strong city. God makes salvation. Its walls and ramparts open the gates that the righteous nations may enter. The nation that keeps faith. A steadfast mind comes with the Lord. A step of my step of mind in the law, and one that comes in God's strength. And in that song that is, is brought to us here, in that song is a reminder to a kind of a picture, if you like, of these strong cities. These are the things that, that from human perspective, we envisage picturing strength. But it's God who's giving to us the strength. We've got a strong city. God makes salvation. It's walls and ramparts. It's a strong city. But it's strong because it's what God has given to us. His gift for us. We have a strong city. It's strong because it is the God, the mighty God, who brings it to us. And salvation, salvation, it's his walls and it ramparts. When we come to that point of saying, yes, I know Jesus as Saviour, so we see the walls that surround us. We see the foundation that's there. A tremendous salvation that's there for us. It's God's strength. It's God's strength. The gates are open for us to walk into this place of strength. The gates are open for us to walk in and claim what's promised for us. The gates are open. That in the righteousness of our Lord, we can discover that peace, that perfect peace our Lord promises to us. It's a promise. A promise of perfect peace. Trusting in the Lord. That's how it finishes off there in that third verse. Because they trust in you. Because they trust in you. And as we move on into the following verses, so we are given a bit more explanation on that. Trusting in the Lord as we claim the promise of perfect peace. God is our rock. God is our rock. I think it was uh, the late Diana, uh, Princess of Wales as she was, who uh, made some comment about somebody being her rock, but our rock, the greatest rock we can ever know, the best rock we can ever know, is our Lord. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. <laughs> He is the rock. He is the rock that we can completely lean upon. He is a rock that we can completely trust. God is our rock. We could use other people as a rock, maybe, but I um, know they will not be there forever. We know they'll not be there forever. There comes a point when they will fail us. But when we look to God, He never fails us. We look to God, he is a rock that's unshakable. We look to God, and he is the rock that's forever firm for us. Trusting in the Lord, because as we trust in him, he is our rock. He'll not move. Trust in the Lord, for he is a rock that is steadfast. Trusting in the Lord 
Because our God is everlasting. Our God is everlasting. He never, he, he never, uh, he, he's forever there. Others will come, they will go, but our God is an everlasting God. An everlasting Lord. And he will be with us, whether it be the good times or the bad times. He's not, he's not a fair weather friend. God is not a fair weather friend. Our God will be with us at the best of times and the worst of times. Our God is more than able to meet our every need. Trusting in our Lord as he brings down our fears. Whatever they may be, he'll bring them down. Those of those people uh, those fears that uh, uh, surround us perhaps and with, I don't know how I'm going to manage that well you know the people of Isaiah's day had the same experience same feeling they didn't know how they were going to manage there were such mighty armies that surrounded them and today the yeah, things that will be our afflictions then our Lord says I'm here for you he brings down our fears. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground, casts it down to the dust. And today, the same. Our God is our one who brings down everything and anything that we fear. And it has to be trust Him and know that experience. We're discovering something more of the peace, that perfect peace that was promised to us in verse 3. Perfect peace promised to us. Tozer once said, the man who comes to a right belief about God is relieved of 10,000 temple problems. It's an awful lot, isn't it? A man who comes to a right belief about God is relieved of 10,000 temporal problems. A bit like a tightrope walker. I don't know, I, I, I suspect that not many of us here have ever walked on a tightrope. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, look, so there's not many of you have. I certainly haven't gone on a tightrope. But this, I can say, is this that the type of walker is someone who needs to have a tremendous trust and hope. So he starts from one end and he walks to the other. He knows that one slip is all it takes and everything, all of his hopes are dashed. He needs to have that trust. But what a great uh, hope we have with our trust in the Lord our God. The God who is our rock, our everlasting rock, is the one who brings down all the fears that surround us. And thirdly, not only the promise of a perfect peace, not only the trusting in the Lord that gives us that peace, but all that we might know what it is to be resting, resting in perfect peace. Mm. Resting in perfect peace. And we need to know that. That resting. That resting in perfect peace. We don't need, when we're in peace, you know, there's no troubles that, surround, that overcome us. We can rest. Our mind, our heart is in a turmoil because we are resting in peace. Resting in that perfect peace. Because it's a peace that God gives to us. So it's perfect. Nothing can compare. A perfect peace for the here and the now. A perfect peace for the future as well. We look through to eternity as the eternal God says, I will be with you every step of the way. As the eternal God says, I will never fail you. To the very end of the age, I am walking with you. An eternal God. Our God. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord Himself, is the rock 
eternal. The rock eternal. You know, as we look to the time that lies before us, not just for today, not just for this coming week, but for all that lies before us, here is what our Lord is commending to us. This promise is commending to us. And all as we look to the promise, may we have those moments, no more than moments, in which we are pursuing this perfect peace. We want it, we desire it. It's, it's, it's that one hope in our, within our heart. We are pursuing it. And we'll follow it every step of the way until it's there and we've grasped it. We want it, we want to know it. A pursuing of that perfect peace. A persevering in peace. And a resting in perfect peace. A resting in perfect peace. I'm conscious as I say that, that uh, the quickness of the tongue can give the wrong understanding there. I'm not saying about a, a, a resting in the sense of being with the police and the law. I'm saying a resting. Nothing to fear, but a resting in perfect peace. That's that confidence alone. He is more than able to meet our every need. And there are things that we cannot do, impossible for us to. If we were to look to the later part of that chapter, and we see how Isaiah is bringing that uh, illustration of a pregnant woman about to give birth. And the pain and the agony that will be going on there as the child is coming. And then he speaks there about the child, about how we were child. And all that comes is not the child. All that comes is that we give birth to women. There's nothing of substance here. There's not the child we're hoping for. It's just a vapor. But in God there is more than just the vapor. In our God there is the hope, the real hope. He gives to us the substance. And we know the substance. We know the substance when we say, Lord, I trust you to do the work. I can't do it myself. I trust you to change things for the better. Start with me, Lord, as I give myself wholly unto you. Um, let's sing, let's spend a few moments now in prayer. Let's pray. Let's say, Lord and Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for uh, your guidance leading us through this song. This song of praise because of the perfect peace you've promised to us. May we grasp that peace, claim it. You've offered it, may we claim it and know it in our lives. Knowing it as we say, Lord, you're the only one for me. So I pray this in your name's sake. Amen. 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 Thank you to those who have joined us on the internet. And as I said earlier, we look forward to the time perhaps we will meet face to face.